Welcome, everybody. This is our final um, App Inventor Q&A and our final webinar before the submissions are due for Technovation for the 2016 season. Uh, I just wanted to welcome you and welcome you to Pet and Jackie, who are both students at Wellesley College, and they're working with us here at Technovation as our resident App Inventor fellas. And, oops, <laughs> hold on a sec. Get back to the slide. My name is Amy Gardner. I'm the director of the curriculum for Technovation. And right now in the program, as I mentioned, we're getting really close to the submission deadline, which is the 21st. So as you know, you're expected to submit your source code and a two-minute demo video of your app as part of the Technovation deliverables. And because we're getting so many questions from teams about App Inventor at this stage in the game, I thought that we'd have yet another session with Jackie and Pet, because the first one went really well. And they graciously offered their time to answer your questions. And we just want to also tell you to hang on in there, because we know it's hard, and you're in the final stretch. And you guys, you guys have this. You can do it. And we're here to help you. So I also wanted to point out to a few resources that you might find helpful, both during our time together today and afterwards. And if you check out your materials section in the panel you have, you'll find that the Google Doc that I linked to is in there. And you'll also find two cool resources that Jackie and Pet made called Tiny Web, TinyDB 101 and 102. So a lot of questions we've been getting have been about databases. And so in order to cover those bases with you guys, they were cool enough to make that resource for you. So you should be able to access this and the recording afterwards, just in case. And keep in mind the Google Doc is yours to access whenever you need it. So to start off, I thought we'd meet Jackie and Pet. Some of you might be coming back for round two. That's cool. But if you're here for the first time, I wanted to just let you know a little bit about them. And then I'll ask them a few questions so you can know them too. Um, let's start off with Jackie, who's on the right here in this picture. She's a sophomore at Wellesley College, majoring in computer science, and she's worked as a research assistant and developer at Wellesley to improve App Inventor's user interface, aiming to make navigating through the workspace more intuitive and streamlined. Currently, she's a tutor and TA for Wellesley's Intro to CS, or Computer Science course, and she hopes to empower more women in the next few months, or actually right now, to using App Inventor as a tool to succeed and improve society. So Jackie, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and what, what got you really interested in App Inventor? What do you like about it? Um, yeah, sure. So um, like you said, I'm Jackie. I'm a sophomore at Wellesley. Um, I did all this stuff with App Inventor. And I think um, what I like most about it is how it really like democratizes programming. Like it's so easy and like friendly for people. Like I really enjoy like using the blocks and like all the nice colors and everything. And I think it just, it makes it, um, it is so much more friendly for like new programmers or like people who are, who might not be like thinking about computer science, but when they see App Inventor, they're like, oh yeah, like maybe I'll like give it a try. And that's, that's what I really like about it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and how about you, Pet? Um, let me just give a little background on Pet, who's also a student at Wellesley. She's a sophomore there, majoring in both computer science and women in gender studies. So she's like a double threat. And Wellesley's mobile app making course taught entirely through MIT App Inventor was her first ever CS or computer science course. Now she's hooked on creative problem solving and can't go back in her own words. In the future, she hopes to find a career that combines both her love of coding and creating with social justice and education. She hopes that she'll also be able to help you guys as you create your apps for your projects. So now to you, how about you? Um, what got you interested in App Inventor and what do you really like about it? Hmm. Okay, so um, the first time I ever heard of App Inventor was um, there was a fair, a major fair, um, where some professors pitched their classes and things like that. So um, the professor for the course pitched um, the class and they showed us that we would be getting a tablet and that it would be like, fun, computer science -y, <laughs> blocky thingies, and I was like, oh, this is cool, I get a tablet, and I fulfill a math requirement, <laughs> so I was like, okay, let's try it out, and um, I ended up really enjoying it, because, I, I don't know, I felt like I was 
creating stuff on the spot, which is really cool. I like the fact that App Inventor has live development. You feel like you're actually doing something. Like, you know, you can touch it, you can play around with it as you're building. You can do some really powerful stuff that um, without App Inventor would have taken you a really long time. And you get to understand kind of like the concepts of computer science without having to get into the nitty gritty details. So that after I took the App Inventor course, um, I felt much more comfortable with like the logic behind computer science. Um, and even now, as like I'm doing more difficult things or whatever, I still think that App Inventor is a really great programming language and is super duper powerful. Nice. So before we get to the Q&A, I wanted to remind everybody that um, about who is going to be looking at your apps and what they're looking for in your submission. And to do that, we need to just kind of focus on the judging rubric for a minute. You can access the judging rubric both on the Technovation website or in the, I think I uploaded them to the materials section. If I didn't, I will in just a minute. But basically they're looking for, is the prototype you submitted really functional? So are all the buttons and links working? Is there a bug there? Is something preventing the buttons from working? Um, another thing they're looking for is, does your app um, call another app? To, to get information or save information? Is it, does it go beyond being static? So this is probably where TinyWebDB is gonna come in, and I presume there might be some questions about that. And then, does it actually match the feature list that you described in your product description? And the product description is 100 words, and we're looking for that. So you have to be able to distill some of the features that your app has in that and this is also asked for in your business plan. And I know you guys are juggling a ton of stuff and you're probably pretty stressed out, but it would really be great if you could just take a few steps back, take a breather, look at your business plan again, and make sure that the recent draft you have matches anything you might have changed in your app. Because we know that people like to make last minute changes, but make sure that these changes are reflected across your whole submission, including the business plan. And then finally, they're looking for, is, is your app easy to use? You know, are they with your app? Do they have more questions than they had before? Because if so, then it's probably not so easy to use. So you're gonna wanna think about the usability and how easy it is to get around your app and navigate. And to that end, I suggest that you revisit the really great UX webinar that we did with Deborah Hirschman from Goldman Sachs. You can find that on the Technovation curriculum website. And then if you scroll down to Ask an Expert webinar series, you'll see all the recordings from the webinars. So this kind of goes a little bit hand in hand. You're working on the engineering when you design the app and you're making it functional and the user experience and the design is like the other side of that coin to make sure that it is navigable. So anyways, um, you'll also notice that you can get a certain amount of points. Um, you can get up to 20 points for the technical category. And this is the most heavily weighted category. So you're going to want to think about that. All right. So without much else, without further ado, I'm going to switch it over to Jackie and Pet. And we're going to look at the questions that were submitted, and they are going to do their best, like they did last time, to respond. And whoever's question is first, I'm going to allow you guys to use your mic so you guys can all talk together. And for those who are waiting, um, I know it's not so awesome to have to wait, but if you listen, you might hear an echo of your question in the question that's being asked. So let me now give presenting ability to... Pet and Jackie. Hold on just a second. Sometimes it takes a second to switch over. Okay. And I do see that the first question comes from Priya. And I'm wondering if Priya is here today, right now. If you are, can you use the chat room to let us know? And if not, we will move on to the next question. Hold on just a second. I know that Anushka is here because I see her logged in. So I'm thinking that unless we hear from Priya right now, we're going to skip to the second question. And hold on, Anushka, I will unmute you, which is very exciting. Okay. <laughs> Anushka, are you there? 
I unmuted you and you're logged in. So I'm hoping that you join the conversation. Anisha? <laughs> Are you here? <laughs> this is sign of life. <laughs> uh, yes, but she didn't ask that question. Can you let us know which question you did ask? You can also, you should be able to use your microphone to talk. Oh, hold on just a sec. Actually, I don't see her. Something might have happened. Okay. I'm wondering if Ronald is here then. Hmm. Mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is Alicia here? Hmm. Wow, this is very mysterious indeed. All right, is a Kirka here? Oh dear. All right, skipping down, we have Megan. Ooh. <laughs> wow, we're about zero for zero here. Um, how about someone from Albania's team, Ivy? Oh, I see some a comment being written in the Google Doc that says Megan is on my team. Ah. Team and then Gloria. Ah, okay. Oh, Gloria. Let's go down to to Gloria. Yeah, let's um let's unmute Gloria since they're on the same team, so we can. Get clarification for Megan's question. Okay, Gloria, I have unmuted you. Hello. Can you hear <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Hi. Um, I'm on Team Gem, and we're looking to create an app that um basically tells the UV rates in an area and tells users when to put on sunscreen. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Yeah. So we were looking. Um, how would we? How's the best way to do that? Uh, that that's a pretty <laughs> broad question. <Yeah. laughs> um, so we're looking, so like clearly, I think you're already um, thinking about using an API for it. But the tricky thing about APIs is that you have to do a lot of like backend stuff. So like actually mm -hmm. coding in like different languages that aren't, um, that aren't Ab as inventor. like yeah, yeah. that aren't app inventor. So that is something that is hard to work around. Um, yeah, so we don't have a lot of experience working with the particular API that you're using. Mm -hmm. And I we like did some Google searches beforehand and there it um, the documentation doesn't seem like super duper promising. So we're not sure like how much you can help you with this. We're like really sorry. But if you have like We'll like try your best. Like we can ask, um, like maybe other professors at our school. Like maybe someone else has like experience with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll like definitely um, look around with like our resources. But for now, if you have any other questions that aren't related to the API, we can definitely help you with those. Yeah. So I mean, we said that you asked a question about, for instance, um, the location sensor, which is seems like to be seems to be a pretty integral part in your app, and that is definitely something that already exists in App Inventor. There is a well, it's because there is a location sensor in every Android device, um, and so you can just use the location sensor on App Inventor to to basically um, communicate with the location sensor that's already on your device and get the location of where you are at the moment. Then, since um, since I'm assuming that to get the UV rates, it's going to be something that's not stagnant. Like it's, it's like constantly changing. That that is the part that could be a little tricky. It would be different if, for instance, for some reason, UV rates didn't change, and all you <laughs> needed was just like a big list of all the information yeah. that you could pull from. But um, I mean, so definitely like understanding how to use the location sensor is important, and I think we try to answer that a little bit. Um, we can give you more information on that, and. Um, well, it's sometimes it's a little hard to integrate um, to integrate APIs into App Inventor. You can 
you know, do a workaround where you show information, for instance, like from a web page using yeah. a mm -hmm. about that, like Coppertone has um a location, like it so it you can put in your zip code and then it'll show your UV rate. But we were having trouble like embedding or like try and find a way to embed this website into our app, you know? Ah, uh, okay. Like embed okay. Well um there is a component in App Inventor called um Web Viewer. And there's also something else called an activity starter. Um they're a little different, but um but in Web Viewer I mean it's it's you know, it's it sounds pretty similar to what you it would it is similar to what you think it would be, which is that you give it a URL and um it displays that web page on your app. Uh, so that might be what you're looking for. Um, that could be useful, but then it's a little, it's a little bit tricky because then it then it's kind of like you're not really interacting with the app. You're kind of just going on the website on your app. So I mean, I would I would um, I guess challenge you to think about well, what ways to make it more feel more like an app. I guess if you want to go that route. Okay. Mhm. Mm um, an activity starter is similar. You can like have your app. Ping like or get to a web page, but that's a little bit more um, complicated to use. The web viewer might be what you're looking for if all you want to do is just display the web page that allows people to put in their zip code and get um, the UV rates. All right. And by the way, like we, our team is at Dan Hall, so we're right next to you guys in Wellesley. <laughs> Wait. Oh, whoa! Wait, I took a squash class there last year. Wait. <laughs> Wait. Is that where? Dana Hall? Dana, oh. Yeah, it's like 15 minute drive from here. Whoa. That's so huh. crazy. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. You should <laughs> hang out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can come to Pets Drop in Hours. <laughs> the Advent Minute class. <laughs> Whoops. That's really cool. Thanks for letting us know. Thanks for being here. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we, I hope that we answered your questions, but definitely. If you have any more questions mm -hmm. on the API, we can see what we can do for you. APIs are always tricky to use because, yeah. um, I mean, part of it is just sometimes the providers of the APIs just don't do a good job with their own yeah. implementations. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So I'm going to mute you now. Sorry. And let's see who is here. I saw in the chat room that, um, whoops, let's see. It's Alicia's team. Alicia, yeah. yeah. So who would like to be unmuted for that? If you could type your name in the chat room, that would be great. Would that be Stephanie? I think Stephanie. Okay, I will unmute Stephanie. All right, Stephanie, you have the floor. Wait, unmuted? I think so, but I can't. Oh, I lost them. Oh, no. Oh, I found them. Wait, can you hear us? <laughs> yes, we can. Yeah, we can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, um, we're having trouble adding a GPS into our app because, um, should we explain our app, like, what it yeah, does? Yeah, mm -hmm. yes. Okay, so our app, um, is a game that's supposed to, um, push children into, um, cleaning up more trash, and in the end of the game, we're trying to add a GPS, so, um, they have the option to um, put in their zip code and um, and find the nearest trash pickup place near them, like a volunteering group. But mm -hmm. we we're having trouble with the GPS. And do we connect it to a website in order to find all those? Um. Okay. So there is something in App Inventor called a location sensor, which we talked about a little bit um, before in the previous question. And what the location sensor does is it uses your um, your device's capabilities to get um, the latitude and longitude of where you are at the moment. Um, and you can use that to, for okay, so for example, um, I created an app once for a class where um, the when you press a button, it tells you where you are in relation to Wellesley's campus, and then it also tells you where the nearest bathroom is. Oh. And in order for us to do that, we actually had to go around and like get the <laughs> latitude and longitudes for all of those different bathrooms. 
um, <laughs> and kind of store it in, in, in some sort of, you know, database where I can go back and, and do some calculations to figure out where is the closest bathroom, right? And that's a little tough, um, especially considering, um, I'm assuming this is something that's going to have to be in some sort of, like, web database, so it's shared and something that's, yeah. like, constantly updated. Mm -hmm. I think as far as having, I think the thing that, I'm worried about, or not worried about, but I think that I'm trying to think about right now is when you said you wanted to use the zip code. Yeah. I don't know how that would translate to getting the latitude and longitude. I'm sure you could get that from somewhere. You can use, like, yeah, yeah. You can you can put in the zip code and get a longitude and longitude of the location from there. So I'm pretty sure that App Inventor's like location sensor component only uses latitudes mm -hmm. and longitudes and not things like zip codes or addresses or anything like that. Oh okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So. So. Okay. So my. I guess if I were to approach this problem, I would. Yeah. So there's a way to find to go from zip code to latitude and longitude. So you can try to incorporate that into your app somehow, so that you can get information. You could probably use an API. Yeah. 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 But um. So once you can get the latitude and longitudes, I would use a web. D database to store them all in. So I'm assuming that there will be places that will be added. And then you can do calculations from latitude and longitude to see where is the closest distance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. If that helps at all. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any other questions that we could help you with? Mm -hmm. No. All right then. So I'm wondering if there's anybody who's currently with us right now that has a question. I'm seeing Clara, Anishka, Diksha, Elizabeth, Lillian. Actually, Lillian asked a question in the chat room that we could get to. Sure. Lillian asked, so our prototype, I think this touches back on my discussion of the the rubric when it said, you know, it's great if you don't just have a static app. Um, her question is, so our prototype needs to have things stored in a server. Isn't it more efficient if it's all in the app? Does the coding count as a server? Um, is it more efficient if it's all in the app? Um. I don't think it's more efficient. It'll probably be faster because you don't have to go to a web yeah. database. It'll probably be yeah. faster, but it depends on what you want, right? If the information is only important to the user, like for example, if the app was like collecting how much RAM, right? That's information that is very um, specific to the user mm -hmm. of the app. So you, there's no reason for you to put in a web database where the purpose of using a web database is essentially share all this information to everybody who's using the app. Um, since it's a personal app, um, that would make sense to use, for instance, TinyDB, um, which is something that is only on your device, or device that's being used, versus a WebDB that shares information. But in comparison, if you had an app that tells you that, that where people put in their ratings or their opinions and thoughts and comments, that could be something that would be in a web database. So in, I wouldn't think about it in terms of efficiency. I would think about it in terms of what do you want to do. Well, Lillian, to answer the, your question, uh, you don't get points taken against you unless you don't submit your deliverables. So um, I think the judges want to see that, I mean, I would advocate then if you, if there is a way for you to connect to an external server or something to make your app talk to other apps, that might be more dynamic and exciting. A personal app is fine if you can make the argument that you don't need to be contacting other databases. You know, it just depends on what you're trying to do. Can you describe what your app is doing? I think that would help if we had a little context. Uh, actually, I'm going to give you the mic. <laughs> Sorry, I should have done this earlier. <laughs> Okay, so our app here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so our app is going to be for kids who have some trouble understanding and disease like diabetes or cancer. 
So we are explaining it through books for the kids, but the story is told by a panda. <laughs> so for the kids, they're going to be able to be read too through the books, or they can read it themselves. But we're typing all the words and everything on the code, so we won't end up reading it. So, Right. We're having some difficulty hearing you. We're really sorry. Could you perhaps um, repeat your question again, please? There's just a lot of um, back on there. Yeah, if you have earbuds or anything that you can pop into your laptop so that it only captures your voice versus the outside noise, that would be helpful. Okay, is that better? Okay, hold on. Lucy, I need you to turn your show down a little bit. Can you turn your show down really quickly? Okay, is that better? A little bit. Yeah, that's definitely better. Okay. I have headphones, so I don't know why it's not. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> basically everything that we're going to be needing will be stored on the coach. So is that going to be a problem? Like, if you look at the judging rubric, it says that you, if you have it, you get this, or no. Like, this amount of points, or is it just not going to matter as much? Um, I think you're going to have to be really persuasive when you make the demo video and your pitch video as to, you know, what the problem is you're trying to solve and what features of a mobile device that you're using, especially, you know. Um, I wouldn't say that it's going to be like they're going to say, I'm taking three points off because you're not connecting to an external database. It's more about being persuasive about why you're using certain features. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So I would work a lot on, for your pitch video, being really persuasive. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, sure. All right, so I see that some people have been entering a few questions towards the bottom of the deck. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> and oh, I yeah, do we get through? <clears throat> do we get through everyone who had previously written a question? I see that Diksha uh, is logged in, and I see that she has a question. Diksha, if you're here, can you let us know in the chat room? And if so, we'll take your question. Okay, great. I will unmute you. All right, Diksha, go for it. Hello, Pat and Jackie. Uh, my question is, is there any way to upload pics onto Google Drive using App Inventor? Hmm. I'm curious. Think about this. Yeah, I know you can definitely like store images through links in like tiny DV or like tiny web DV. I don't know and about then, yeah. I'm not sure about uploading. But I think you can retrieve photos. Uploading. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, let's do a quick that's, Google search. Let's quick gonna, search. <laughs> hmm. I wonder if there's a way to upload things into Google Drive using some sort of link. Okay, Google Drive API. Ah. Okay. Oh, you can. Nice. That's so cool. Let's okay. Check it out. Okay. okay. <laughs> Sometimes it's that's cool. Okay, we'll post on that channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll post this. This. Yeah. There is definitely a way to do that. This is a website I've seen before. Do you guys? Recommend using this website for resources. Yeah, it seems like this website does have quite a few resources for um, doing more complicated things with Apple Mentor. Um, I think there's some limitations, so I think the purpose of the site is to get 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think the first time was actually like <laughs> I think the goal of the first time was like, to have you pay the person so that they can help you. Yeah. Oh, they are some great reasons on their website regardless. Are there any other pointers you have for Diksha? Um, people searching is very powerful. <laughs> <laughs> I think there might be some more resources that would help you out, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I think you should like do a Google search on your own and see if you can find anything else. I think like, right now you don't have too much experience with the topic, so Google searching is our first go to. But, yeah. I'm wondering if it's, I don't think it's coming from your dorm room. I think it might be coming from Deeksha. Okay, yeah, that was definitely coming for her. I'm sorry I had to meet you, but it was getting a little crazy. Um, I would recommend, do you have that link that you could cut and paste into the chat room? Um, okay, yeah, I just in the Google Oh, okay, yeah. So you can often find their responses in the Google Doc. <laughs> so. so that website is really great because there are actually snippets of them using the Google Drive API on App Inventor. Um, so that should help you out. Um, in general, the Google APIs are are pretty well written, um, so I think it, it won't be, it would definitely be doable to navigate through the APIs and use it. Um, yeah, so this is tough because this is question is more based on like the API for Google Drive rather than App Inventor, um, and since we haven't used the one for Google Drive necessarily, um, we don't really know the, specific, the specifics of what you need um, in order to access um, the ability to upload things or download things from the Google Drive API, but if you have any questions, um, that are more specific to like what blocks and why is this not working um, on the app inventory side rather than the code that's given by Google, we can help you out. All right. Okay. So K E J J S, it seemed like, okay, Stephanie's, was Stephanie's question answered? I'm not sure. Okay. Okay, um, how about Sukrithya? I know that she's here with us because I see her logged in. Oops. Let me unmute her. <laughs> oh wait, she's not connected to audio. Oh wait, yes, hold on. Hmm. Okay, so Sukritya, we have you on the mic. If you want to ask your question. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, I'm Sukritya. Nice to meet you. Hi. Uh, so my question was, um, like, our app actually deals with the donation of spare change. Oh. So, like, we would like to add an e-wallet. Um, so can we use payment gateways like Paytm? Um, I'm pretty sure there's an API for payment. Um, Paytm. There's. I just. I just did a Google search. I'm not sure about Paytm. Oh. Um, oh, I found something. So there is. Right. So there are developer options for Paytm. But as far as I know, there are no resources out there for integrating Paytm into App Inventor. So that could be a little difficult. So, I mean, I guess the quick answer to your question is yes. Like, I think there is a way to integrate <laughs> the API of a specific KTM with App Inventor, but there is, it, it will um, include some sort of um, manipulation of, of code from KTM that is probably going to be written in another language, if that makes sense. So I'll go ahead um, and have yeah. Jackie paste um, it into you. Yeah, yeah, maybe there are, like, other APIs you can use, like, 
Um, like what I'm looking at now is some people might have used PayPal. Um, yeah, so maybe you can like explore different methods of and different platforms of like getting the spirit change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So okay, did you send it to me? Yeah, on Facebook. Okay, okay. On Facebook. I think it's definitely possible. Um, I would encourage you to go look at the link that we're about to send, which is the developer site. So most most things that most most platforms have some sort of developer side to it that gives basically they just give you code so that you can use their 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 platform in your own apps. But it just depends on how well they've written it and how easily you can integrate it into your app. If that makes sense. All right. Um, is, that, is that helpful? Do you have any other follow-up questions that we can answer? Oh. Yeah, I do have one more question. Yes? Yeah, so uh, can we include pie charts which each time when there's an update in information will change? Like, it's not, it's not going to represent static data. It's going to be something which is variable. Ah. So... The Google, the Google Maps chart, chart, chart API. API. Yeah, so there is a Google Charts API that basically, from so I did a quick read through it, and it seems like what the Google Charts API does, it, it creates an HTML file that gives you, so an HTML file, if you're um, not aware, is the file type for basically all websites. Um, it's what's, it's basically what's going on when you go to a website and it shows you a web page, like that's an HTML file. Um, so, say for instance, if you had a .html file on your computer, you can open it with your web browser, and it would look like a like a normal website. Except, of course, like websites that you actually go to every day are being hosted on um like they're paying money to have it always be there. So it's not just on your computer; it's for everyone to see. So, anyways, the Google Charts API gives you an HTML file that you can then use and show it using the Web Viewer component of App Inventor and um. I think that allows for you to click on it and change it and things like that. Mm -hmm. Nice. So I'll go ahead and type in Google Charts API in the Google Doc. <laughs> um, and send you a link to that. Yeah, and I think we answered the next question already. And then right now, uh, where is where is the thing? Here it is. I think Elizabeth just asked, can you copy and paste components with the backpack in App Inventor or just the code? So I'm pretty sure, I think you can only copy the blocks, unfortunately. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But Lillian just answered a question that, yeah, so Lillian, Lillian has experience with this. Great. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. He's helping each other out. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you all are like better resources than we are even because... App Inventor changes so much, and they're always like new updates all the time. Like I worked with App Inventor this past summer, and already there is like two new features, like fusion tables and backpack. When we came into this, we were like, "What? That's like completely new." So it's really awesome that you're helping each other out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks, Lily. Yeah. So, is there anyone else who's currently in the chat room whose question is yet to be answered? Just let us know in the chat function. If not, um, there's a, oops, I know of a, an App Inventor forum that I've, I've been asked to tell people to go use, and I can cut and paste that in. Apparently, people in there are very helpful, and they're, they're really eager to help answer questions. Let me just get that link for you guys in case you want to ever join it. It's called the App Inventor Forum. And here's a link in the chat. It's a Google group, basically. So in case, you know, in the next few days you're working on stuff and you can't get easy access to Jackie and Pet, I strongly recommend that you guys go there. 
And also, you know, just like you guys did today, provide the context of your app, maybe share some screenshots and, and also ask your question. It seems like Elizabeth had a question about graphs. Yeah. Okay, let me unmute you, Elizabeth. Hold on just a second. Okay, you should be good to go. Hello? Hi. Okay. Um, on our app, we are using like a daily check-in function. And then we'd, we're storing the values of the check-in in tiny DB. And then I wanted to graph that so they could see like their progress over time. But I wasn't really sure how to generate the X and Y values for that. Can you give us, can you repeat the part about, so where are you parsing the information from? Um, it's saved TinyDB under a tag with the date, um, uh, yeah, so I thought that maybe I could, yeah, I thought maybe I could use the, like, the dates as the x-axis, but I wouldn't really know what to do from there. Okay, so you're retrieving the information from TinyDB and using it to make the charts, and what are you using to make the actual graphs? Um, I was going to use like a canvas. Does that work? Ah. Yeah, you yeah, can definitely that. do that. Um, okay. So, so you wanted your x-axis to be the date, and then what did you want your y-axis to be? Um, just like one to ten. Sorry, could you repeat that? Just one to ten. Oh. Numbers. Okay. Okay. Mm. So what you can do. Huh, wait. I think, um, yeah, one second. I need to be, I'm gonna test it from here. Oh, okay. no, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see if the components. Okay, so, <laughs> I think you can, okay, so you can, it's a little tricky. Okay, so you can, there's the, in TinyDB, you can get all the tags, which if your tags are the dates, and that could be your x axis, right? So you can get all the tags, and then you can store it in a list. That way you can easily get stuff out, get the individual tags out. But then in order for you to get all the values, pretty sure you're going to have to like create a loop that loops through every... So once you grab the tags, right? So say like um, your your, your database has like three tags. There's like April 1st, April 2nd, April 3rd. You grab all the tags out. So then you have it in a list where the first element is April 1st, second element is April 2nd, third element is April 3rd. You have all of that. And then um, you can then use that list of tags and loop through that list um, to get all the values because there's no way in TinyDB for you to grab all the values the same way that you're grabbing all of the tags. Um, and once you can get all the values out, you can just save that in another list and then use those two lists to construct your graph on the chart, if that makes sense. Um, just, okay. you know, if you have any questions about that, like you can ask. <laughs> yeah. So um, with TinyDB, can you have multiple databases? No. no. The, the one tiny, tiny DB is the one that's used for the entire app, even through multiple screens. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what would I do if I have other tags in tiny DB? You could have multiple tags in tiny DB. Yeah, but like I think she's saying, like, maybe she doesn't have all date values as her tags, and um, she has, like, hi. Mm -hmm. That's tough. That is tough. Yeah. You can you can get the tags and like filter them out. Like maybe if your dates all have like a similar like structure, like if you're all of them like start with April or they all like have a one at the end, maybe you could like mm, yeah, you can filter yeah. out your list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can do that, or you can make your you can save your information in such a way that whenever a date is entered, it goes into a separate tag. That's just dates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all the values are dates. So you can try that too. So for instance, like if your database was like April first, April second, April third, and then like cat, you know, and you and you want to get <laughs> all the tags that are dates and not cat, you can um, still have April first, April second, April third, and cat, but then have another tag that says dates, where the tag is dates and the values are April first, April second, April third. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And that way you can just grab the value from that tag, which is dates, and then use the values in that tag to grab the values in time. <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. That might have been a little confusing, so let us know if you yeah, want to clarify. That makes sense, though, right? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. yeah okay. Great job, great job. No problem. Are you, are, <laughs> so those are two options. <laughs> nice. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, no thank you. Where are you calling from? It must be very early in the morning or late. <laughs> um, yeah, it's about 1.30. Oh. <laughs> so long. Stay oh, strong. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> I hope you sleep well. <laughs> I hope so too. All right. Is there anybody else who's now with us still who has yet to have a question answered or would like to take this last opportunity while we have Jackie and Pet? Oh, anonymous cormorants. On Google Doc, has a question. question. Scroll up. Gloria. Oh, Gloria has a question. Okay. Oh. Hold on. Oh, it's <laughs> um, Hi. Hi again. <laughs> um, how do you parse text from a web API? How do you parse text from a web API? Pretty yeah. sure you're going to have to do some. JSON and JavaScript. <laughs> sure, well, JSON is a part of JavaScript, but I'm pretty okay. sure you have to use that. Uh, that's a tough question. Uh, that's a tough question yeah. because it involves using a, a different programming language. And um, oh, in your second question, is there a programming language in App Inventor? App Inventor itself is a programming language. Mm -hmm. okay. Technically, what's behind App Inventor is Java. Yeah, Java and JavaScript mainly. Mm -hmm. Okay, like, thank you so much. Uh, yes. So, I mean, if you okay, so if you if you have some specific questions about using JavaScript, we can try to help you out yeah. because we have some experience, and I've and I've had experience um parsing data from other APIs, but not on App Inventor. But I've tried. <laughs> yeah, yes. we can try. Mm -hmm. We'll try our best. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> yeah, I think it's hard because um, I think, so my suggestion is for you to go try and do it, and if you have any specific questions, come back to us, because it's very hard to kind of explain from step one to the very end how to parse data, because every API is different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why. Okay. All right, thank you so much. No problem. Cool. Um, oh, Suvrita. Says, can we launch App Inventors, App Inventor apps on iOS? Unfortunately, not currently. Um, yeah, App Inventor only works on Android devices. Right. In order to write for uh, Apple devices, you'll have to use a different programming language. Mm -hmm. Swift. Swift. That's Xcode, nice. right? Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm, really curious. <laughs> I'm wondering if anyone, I'm betting that everyone here is using App Inventor, but if any of you do know um, Swift or you want to, I just heard that there's an academy or something going on and we're going to be sending out information about it because um, the people at Apple are interested in us helping students use Swift. So, mm -hmm. yeah, anyway. Keep your eyes out for an email soon about that if you're a student. All right. So last last call, everybody. Are there any questions? Oh, there's yeah. another one. I think it's Gloria again. <laughs> last question. Oops. How to use Java with. with App Inventor? Yeah, it's Gloria again. <laughs> Hi. Hi, I am needed Gloria. So is it possible to like combine the coding from Java and with App Inventor? Um I I don't think there is. I think there there might be a way I remember hearing about a way where you can like convert your App Inventor code 
into Java, mm -hmm. although I don't have any experience with that, so I'm not sure. And I'm not sure if you can take the Java and turn it into App Inventor code. I'm pretty sure that's not something that you can do currently. Although, if you're working with APIs or anything, if an API uses Java, you can definitely. Right. Is that is that right? if you hmm, if you feel comfortable using things like Java, like sorry, using languages like Java and JavaScript already, mm -hmm. then I recommend you not even using App Inventor. Like if these are languages that you already have experience with, um, just use um like Android Studio, um, and write your whole app in Java. Because that might be easier. Because there are certain things in App Inventor that you can't do just because people haven't created the blocks yet, but you can do it using just normal old Java, if that makes sense. Normal old Java. I mean, Java's kind of old. Which <laughs> <Yes. laughs> is true. Yeah. <laughs> Could you possibly like, type that up again like for me? I didn't quite get that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um. Um, yeah, does anyone else have any other questions? We'll like type it into the Google Doc. So if you guys who are still here want to just type into the chat, you know, what... I'm just curious to know whether you've enjoyed using App Inventor and would you do it again? You know, what are your thoughts? And if there are no other questions or thoughts, then maybe um, while Jackie's typing, you could maybe give some words of encouragement, Pet. Sure. <laughs> we're, we're both typing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can, I can give words of encouragement. Yeah, I think you all are doing so great. And I think I, I said this in the last webinar, but one of my friends, I was like telling one of my friends, I was like, yeah, I'm like doing this webinar for like these Technovation Challenge teams who are like doing such amazing work and they're like, wow, like you're, you're like making a difference. You're like helping these girls out. And I was like, it's these girls who are making the difference. Like all these amazing apps that they're making are like helping their community so much and they're learning so much and they're going to be, they're going to continue to help their communities with everything that they've learned from doing Technovation Challenge and all the teamwork and like everyone helping each other and just like the community with Technovation is just like so incredible and like all these girls are working so hard to get these abs done so they can help other people. And I think that's just so incredible. And you all are so incredible for doing this. And especially, like, <laughs> like when you have to, like, wake up so early or, like, stay up late at night to, like, attend webinars like these, that's, like, so much commitment and dedication. And that's something that I admire so, so much in all of you. And I just feel so lucky that I can work with all of you in helping to make the world a little bit better through programming and app inventor and just, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I totally agree. I mean, as someone who's studying women that are studying computer science, like, the thing about computer science, I think, that sometimes makes me sad is that a lot of it is very um, profit-oriented and a lot of it is very, it's fine. That's fine. I mean, that keeps the world running. But I guess, like, it's always nice to, to understand that, oh, you, you can use technology for good, right? And all of these apps are going to help your own communities in some way and, like, impact your community. And yeah, there's something cool about creating the new Venmo, or but there's also <laughs> something really great about using technology to help people yeah. um, in more ways than just you know that, anything that's money oriented. And I think that's really cool that we're trying to use technology for good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That means a lot. I think that's so beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we're doing. <laughs> I'm happy that you joined us because you guys are also at a really busy time in your semester and it's really great that you're there for us so we thank you so much thank you well, we'll try our best you can try your best until the deadline yeah <laughs> yeah if you guys still have questions between now and submission you can always email me um, let me just make myself the presenter again so I can share my email address Sure. Hold on just a second. <laughs> yeah, it might be helpful to have like just another Google Doc for everyone to post their questions in. So just in case like um, questions overlap and then other teams can help each other as well like through the Google Doc. So we'll be like, maybe we can have one from now until like 
the deadline, and then we'll be on the school doc answering questions as best we can, and then if other people have input too, they can also um, type in responses. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Thanks for being so willing and open to that. So I just wanted to thank you again, because you guys are so awesome, and you have such a nice way of describing how to you know, circumscribe some of the issues or figure out ways to find the information and also just looking to see how you did your search to find responses was really helpful. So I think that's really cool. So everybody, thanks for coming. Um, this is being recorded. So if you come back within probably a day or two or so to the Technovation Challenge slash curriculum website and you scroll down to ask an expert webinar, you should be able to see the video recording of this along with any other video recording from the prior webinars. And you can also access the information we talked about in the materials section. And you can get the judging rubric off the Technovation website. So I definitely recommend taking a look at that again. And whoops, <laughs> I think I didn't meet someone. Anyway, um, this is our last webinar. So I just wanted to thank everybody for being a part of that. This has been a really productive and encouraging set of webinars. And we're really excited for you guys to submit your apps because we know that you're problem solving creatively. And it's just really exciting to see what problems you've identified and how you're going about addressing those problems. So I wanted to thank you, our audience, too, very, very much. Because without you, this would be silly and boring. Um, <laughs> no. Um, you guys make this whole program very exciting. So I just wanted to thank the audience as well. So yeah. note, um, any final words, Jackie and Pet, or any final words from the audience in the chat room? Good luck. Yeah, <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. Hold Woo, we're, we're rooting for you. <laughs> Okay, everybody, I'll be sending you an email out, and we look forward to your submissions. Okay, bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. bye.